Welcome to Lesson 6.7. Now, in Lesson 6.7, we're going to go to the next step from your coordinate pairs on to the graphing. Now, graphing you've done in grade 7, and you did it in grade 6, so locating coordinate pairs on a Cartesian plane should not be difficult for you, but we're going to go over it a little bit just so you can, you know, to help you out. <coughs> First off, you have your table of values, your input, your output, and your ordered pair. The input in this case is what we refer to as your x coordinate. So you're always going to put your x's, you're going to go on the x-axis for your input. Your outputs are always going to be on your y-axis. Now remember, an axis is the numbers that you have set up on a graph. So negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. This is your x-axis. This is where your input goes. So if I wanted to find negative 2, 0, I guess I'll take it expand this a little bit. Negative 1, negative 2. There is negative 2 on my x-axis. All right. Now to find information on my y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, this is my y-axis up and down, and this is always your output. So if I wanted to plot 1, 3, 1 is the first one, I'd go over to 1, and then I'd look to where the 3 would be, and I'd put a dot there. You don't put these lines in. So there is 1, 3 right here. So let's take a look at uh, some of the other information that's on this page. So now that you have a table of values, you need to graph the result. The first value is called the input. It's always located on the x-axis, which is horizontal. And the second value, called the output, is located on the y-axis. So for negative 2, 0, you would locate negative 2 on the x-axis. So you'd go left from the 0 uh, on, the, on the horizontal until you get to negative 2. And then you're going to go neither up nor down because it says to go to 0 on the y-axis. So this would be negative 2 on the x-axis is where your dot would be. Now for negative 1, negative 2, first point would be negative 1 on the x-axis. So start at the origin, go left to negative 1, and then go up 2. That would be where negative 1, 2 is. And you continue doing this for every one of the points in your table of values. So let's get some practice here. Here's your table of values, and here is your your Cartesian plane that I have for you. What I'd like you to do is take these points and plot them on this Cartesian plane. So for negative 2, 0, you're going to start at the origin, which is where the O is right here. That's your origin. You're going to go left to negative 2, and then you're either going to go up or down depending on what the Y value is. Now your Y value here is a 0. So that means you're not going to go up or down. You're going to stay where you are. So that means that negative 2, 0 is located right there. Negative 1, 2 means you go over to negative 1, and then you go up to negative 2, which is right there. Again, don't put the graph, don't put these lines in there just to help you. 0, 4 would be 0 on the, and then, sorry, zero on the x-axis and go up 4 on the y-axis. 1, 6 would be 1 on the x-axis and then 6 up. And then 2, 8 is over 2, up 8. Now, if you did it correctly, and if things plotted right, it should form a straight pathway, okay? If it's things, if it's done correctly. If it's not done correctly, then one of those dots will be out of place, or maybe even two or three of them. Now, because this is integers, we, don't, we do not put on a line because these are what we call discrete. That discrete means there's no numbers between them, just the dots, okay? So let's go to the next question. Okay. This time I've got x plus 1 for my expression. I want to do from 0 to 5, and I need you to fill in the table of values. Now, we're going to fill in the table of values exact same way as we did on our previous lesson. Start with x e your equation for x plus 1, and we're going to use x is 0. So for x equals 0, I'm going to go x plus 1 formula, 0 plus 1, and that gives me a 1. So my first output is a 1. That gives me an ordered pair of 0, 1. Now on my graph, I'm going to go down to 0 on the x-axis, because that's the first one, and then go up 1. So there is my first point, 0, 1. The second point is x is equal to 1. So I have my expression x plus 1. Put in 1 for your x, that gives me 2. So for when my input's a 2, uh, when my input's a 1, my output's a 2, give me the point 1, 2. I want to go to graph this, go over 1, up 2, and there you go. Now, 
the third one, x equals 2. We have x plus 1 as our expression. We say x was 2, so that gives me 3. So my third pair is 2, 3. So go over 2, up 3. And there we go, is that one. Now if you take a look, you've got your th first three points. So now you'll see we're going up by 1, so we can be pretty confident this is going to be a 4, a 5, and a 6. So my pairs are going to be 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 6. So now going back to 3, 4, you go over 3, up 4, over 4, up 5, and over 5, up 6. And you can see it very clearly that we've got a straight pathway. Now because it's a linear equation, because we're in grade 8, you should have no trouble figuring out that you did this correctly. All right, and that's all there is to it. Now when I mark it, formula, substitution, answer, formula, substitution, answer, formula, substitution, answer, and then I'm going to go down here making sure you got all the pairs of output and order pairs together. When I take a look at your graph, I'll be looking at all your points. Are they all done correctly? So there you go. You can see how many marks this is going to turn into. Quite a few. All right, turn the page. Now, sometimes besides creating the, the ordered pair, sorry, the ordered pairs from a table of values and then graphing it, sometimes we have to describe the graph. Now, here's the goal. You want to be able to give someone your description and have them create the graph without anything else but your description. So, to describe a graph, you have to tell what's happening to the x and y values, and you have to give a starting point. So if you take a look at this one here, I've got what's happening to the x value. Well, you can see here it's a 1, a 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're going up by, you should be seeing we're going up by 1 each time. All right. So the first thing you'd be saying is, as x increases by 1, and now we look at the y values. What's happening to the y values? Well, the y values are going from 0, but look at this. Our scale is on a 2 here, so it goes up 2. This is going up 2. You can put it here if you want. It goes up 2, 2, and 2. So as x is increasing by 1, y is increasing by 2. Now, the only thing we need is a starting point. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to get the dots in the right location. So we have to go to the very first one, and that's right here. And that's the origin. So starting at... zero, zero. Now with these three pieces of information, I know I, I can put that graph together. I don't have to have anything else. I know that I started at zero, zero, so my first point is going to be here on the bottom at the origin. This is my first point. There's my first point right there. Zero, zero. Now all I know is as x increases by one, so I'm going to go over one, y increases by two. Go up two. That'll locate that point. Over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 2. And you can see that I've got the graph perfect. There's nothing missing. It exactly matches what I have here. So that's what your goal of your description is, to be able to create the graph so someone else can get it. All right, so this is what I'd like you to do. I want you to describe this graph. So pause the recording and describe the graph. Okay, let's start. First off, take a look at our x-axis. Our x-axis is going up by 1s. So as x increases by 1, y does what? Well, we've got over 1. y goes up 2, and you see that's a 3 here. So y is going up by 3s. y increases by 3, and now I need a starting point. We look over here. The first point is at the origin 0, 0. So this is starting at 0, comma 0. So there's my three pieces of information that I can use. All right, that's my description. Okay, turn the page. Now, this one here, you'll notice we're doing a little bit different. This one's decreasing. So try to uh, do a description of this one. Okay, so pause the recording and do it. All right, if you look at this one, you'll notice something really peculiar. You'll notice that it goes up by twos, but the first dot is halfway between it. All right? So this point here is actually one. 
and this is negative 1, uh, negative 3, negative 5, negative 7, and negative 9. So you see we're working with the odd numbers here. The x's are still going up by 1, so that's pretty good. So we just have to figure out what's going on from one to the other. So let's start out with the first part. As x increases by 1, y is now going down. So y decreases by, now let's take a look. This is not negative 1. And this is positive 1, so that's that's going down by 2. So it decreases by 2. Now here's the thing. It's starting at it's starting at 0, 1. All right, there you go. All right, pause the recording and do this one. Okay. There we go. Starting with x, and as x increases by 1, y is going up, so it increases by, now let's take a look. This is 2, and there's 4, so this is 5. So y increases by 5, and now I need a starting point. Starting at, and you see down here, Look carefully, you can see the trend. These are uh, five, and it's going down one, two, three. So it's going down three, so this one would be one, two, three. So that's going to be negative one. So my x axis is zero, the y axis is negative one. Okay, so that takes care of how to do a description. Turn the page. Now what I want to do is I want to do all three together. We're going to give you a, an equation to work with, a table of values. We're going to give you uh, coordinate pairs, and then we're going to get you to graph it. And then when you're done, you're going to do the description. So pause the recording and do this, and then I will set it up. Okay, so I'm going to pause my recording so that my recording is not so long, and I'll do the table of values. Okay, so we're back. What I've done is I filled out the four, the three setups, or the three uh, y values. You can see that on the left-hand side, what I've done here is I've got my first equation, y is equal to negative 4x plus 1. I put in negative 4, and I got a value of 17, which I put over in my y value. Then I did the same thing for negative 3, and I got 13, which I put in place. So I've now got uh, negative 3 comma 13. And then of course I did 9 on the far right over here, so I have negative 2 comma 9. So hopefully yours matches. If you take a look, 17 to 13 to 9 are going down by 4 each time, so that means there's a good chance this is a 5, 1, and then we get negative 3, negative 7, negative 11, and negative 15. So let's take a look at my coordinate pairs, negative 1, 5, 0, 1, 1, negative 3, negative 3, yeah, 2, negative 7, 3, negative 11, and 4, negative 15. So now I've got all my coordinate pairs. Now I can move down and do my graphing. So let's take a look at my graphs. The first thing I need to locate is negative 4, 17 on my y axis. And you can see right off the bat that I've got a problem. I don't have a way to get to. 17 on my y-axis. So I've got to change my scale here, um, and, and this is what I've done already for you, but on the ones you get from my class, you'll notice that the values here don't go up by 4s, so they usually go up by 1s to 10. So if you have to change the scale, there's another version of this where you can get which is blank, and you just fill in your numbers, okay? So let's take a look at what we got. I've got negative 4, 17, so I'm going to go left to negative 4, then up to 17, which is right here. All right, my dot's a little bit big. And then I've got negative 3, 13. So go over to negative 3, up to 13. And then I've got negative 2 and 9. So I'll go over to negative 2, go up to 9, and then go to, you can see now how it's working, negative 1, 5. 
uh, 0, 1, oh, sorry, negative 1, 5, 0, 1, There's something is wrong here. I've uncovered a mistake. And the reason I've realized there's a mistake is, look at this line. None of them is out. All right. Oh, I see what I did. I put negative 3 at negative 5. Do you notice what I did? I was able to put the ruler on there and realize that one of mine was out of right here. This one here is out of alignment, isn't it? It doesn't follow the same paths as the others. So I mistakenly plotted that as negative 1, negative, oh, sorry, negative 1, 5, when in fact it shouldn't have been. All right. It should have been negative 1, and this one should be down here. You notice it all comes back into alignment now, doesn't it? So that's the next. So I've got now I've got uh, zero one, and then one negative three. One negative three is right here, and then I've got two negative seven. Go over two down seven, which is six sevens right there. I'll slide this up, and negative three eleven. So go over three down to eleven. I may have been the, may have been the mistake here. Let's take a look. Negative four and fifteen. All right. So, yeah, I can see that I put this one in. It's very hard for me to see these these numbers on this on the smart board. It's probably clearer for you on your paper, but they're pretty fuzzy for me. So anyway, you take a look. Everything's lined up. Now the question is, do we join a line? Now let's go back to our information here. It says for the equation negative 4x plus 1, create a table of values and graph the results described in the graph. Now it gives us the x values, and it doesn't say that it's an integer or not, but because we've given us the x values, we're going to assume that they only want integers. Okay? So in this case, you do not join in line through the points. So let's take a look at our description now. So as x is, take a look at our first point, is over here. Here's our first point. So x is going from negative 4 to negative 3. So as x increases by 1, what's our y doing? y decreases. And you can see it's going from 15 down to 11, so it's decreasing by 4. And it is starting at negative 4 17. Okay? Negative 4, 17. So starting at negative 4, 17. Okay? So I've got what's happening to the x, -fax, x value, what's happening to the y value, and a starting point. So I could recreate this graph if I needed. Okay, next page. And that's it. Okay, so you complete your assignment and then review everything because we have a unit final coming up. And this is the end of our chapter six. We will see you in chapter seven.